Today I want to talk about why enterprise customs are mostly stupid, and they really are. And I want to talk about some of the reasons as to why I think they're stupid. And unsurprisingly, it has a lot to do with managers and incentives to actually be stupid. <laughs> So I got a question from somebody, from John, and he emailed me and he said, I work at a vendor, and I thought this before I joined the vendor, it's always struck me as odd that customers rely upon vendors to suggest products so much. It's often like customers can't be bothered to do their own research into different suppliers. Why? And that's a good question because that's been my experience. I've often been hired to help customers make decisions, or I was the customer making those decisions, and vendors got really upset at me when I wanted to make my own decisions. Yes, I've actually had vendors come and tell the people who employed me that I should be taken off site because I'm not thinking the right way. I quote, unquote, I'm not thinking of the way the vendor wants me to. And so this is something I had a lot of personal experience with and uh, something that I've often not followed, I've done myself. So it's a good question. But let, before we start, let's just summarize it. There's lots of small but negative motivations here to do this. And that's about misaligned incentives. So that when you've got negative motivations and incentives that point in different directions, you tend to end up with a system that doesn't work. And partly that's to do with ITIL, and partly that's just because that's the way the system is. And largely it's because of bad leadership and incompetent managers, which is incredibly common in enterprise IT. If you were a good manager, you wouldn't be working as a cost center, right? Start. Technology is the same everywhere. Everyone uses the same technology to do the same things. Company A, company B, it doesn't matter whether you're in the financial market or in the healthcare market. You're all using TCP IP. You're all using Ethernet. You're using storage or block or HTTP. You're using compute. You're using x86 CPUs. You're using the same switches. It's all the same. It's just because you managed to assemble the Lego blocks into a circle instead of a square doesn't make you a genius, right? Snowflakes only exist in your head in the terms of infrastructure because it makes you feel important and worthwhile. So when a vendor tells you that, yes, you're a unique and a special snowflake, you know that the bullshit's coming. Vendors are able to hire good staff and train them, and customers are less likely to pay well. And that creates a gap. That is, generally, vendors have more talented staff and more capabilities. Customers are less likely to pay well unless they're enlightened. And even if they do have them, they're less likely to train them and keep them. And in the middle of these two is resellers. Resellers have lots of good experience to offer you, but almost zero training and not very good pay for the work that they expect, right? So this is an important problem in, in uh, enterprise IT. Most um, enterprises don't see computers as a profit center, they see it as a cost center, and therefore spending money on the best stuff isn't actually something that's done. Customers also then don't know that they have bad staff. So if they've got the worst staff sitting around or the, you know, the people who work for less money or less motivated or less talented, then the customers will all measure themselves by each other and say, I'm as smart as the guy next to me. What they don't know is that they're all bad. And that includes executives and leadership as well. Now, it is in the vendor's self-interest to have dumb customers, right? So that you, you can just, if you have a dumb customer, then the vendor is much more likely to influence the purchasing decision. And I've seen this many, many times where the vendors sort of get in like seagulls around a bag of chips and desperate to get the purchase order. It's really quite frightening, right? And the way that they'll do this is, tell customers that you can reduce your headcount by using the shiny new feature. Now, this is something I've actually seen. Here's a case study. Uh, you're going to buy a thing. It's worth a million dollars. Then the vendor says, you know, we've got this thing for $2 million, and it'll get help you to get rid of a headcount because it's got new shiny chrome knobs on it that don't need operational expertise. And the manager thinks, you know, I could do that. I could buy it. I could get that and then get rid of that headcount. Or more likely, he'll say things like, well, that would free up those two headcount to do something else. You buy the box, gets it on ground, the operational features don't work out, you have to keep the headcount around, and now all of a sudden there are a million bucks in the hole, and the problem's actually doubled down. But if you're an incompetent manager, you don't want to admit that you've got to make a mistake or that you need to change up, and so nothing changes. Sales teams can sell them whatever they like, they get paid out their bonuses and they're out of there, and the customer's not um, skilled or talented enough to know when something is bad, and um, executives are often incompetent to the point where they can't go back to the vendor and say, get this fix. Uh, and we see in the end that vendors take advantage of this by banding around terms like a brand you can trust or tried and true supplier or been here forever or we'll be here to support you. That's all rubbish in reality. You should not need support. You should not need a trusted brand. You should not need a tried and true supplier. You should need something that works as promised. C complexity does sell. Our vendors do deliberately make products complex. Famously, Microsoft Word 
in Office 365, the team there decided that they didn't want to lose um, to competition here. They didn't want to simplify the product. They doubled down on complexity, and that made it harder and harder for enterprises to switch. So the more challenging you can make a product, you actually create lock-in, but it also creates career opportunities. Those people who, if you're not very talented and not very bright, you may start to take the view that having skills in a complex thing is actually something worth having. And then there's value in being expert in vendor's command line or vendor's configuration or vendor's scripting tools instead of actually knowing real technology like fundamentals. Let's not forget the value of hubris and pride. Customer executives are often technically challenged, but they don't want to admit that they're fools or idiots or incompetent. Fair enough, that's human enough, right? You don't want to appear stupid to your salary owner. You don't want to appear to your boss and go, boss, I made the wrong decision. I overspent by 50%, 100%, and uh, I've got a problem. I, can't, I don't know how to get out of this. I've now run out of budget. How do I get more? We don't see that. Um, pride and image matters more than you think, and that's part of it. Once you do make these mistakes, then vendors are in there to exploit them. It's in their interest too. They're being paid to exploit them but the customer is not smart enough to, to work around the, pro the limitations. And never underestimate the value of a free lunch. Now, just because your salary owner is actually paying for the lunch and the golf game by paying overpriced for the products that you purchased, um, doesn't mean that it's not worth having. It's an acceptable form of bribery, um, and ultimately your salary owner pays, not you. And a, you know, a steak lunch is not a bad thing. And getting rid of smart employees who really don't like steak lunch lunches or golf, they actually want to be smart and do something useful and meaningful, eh, leaves things comfortable and unchallenged. Now, customer IT executives are not rewarded for doing good work, right? Their goal is to support other parts of the organization, to help accounting or to help the sales team or the production process. So their goal isn't actually to be good at IT, their goal is to just not be noticed for doing a bad job. So this misalignment of goals and motivations isn't right, but that's the way it works. ITIL isn't focused on getting excellent IT infrastructure services or valuable services to the clients. It's just focused on not being bad. And inherently in not being bad is that you'll never, ever be good. And the last thing is that we see this a lot in companies that are not technology natives. And there's two things here. A lot of companies don't see technology as a solution. They just see it as a cost or a problem or something they have to do. This boils down sometimes to a reality that older people who run these companies don't actually have an instinct for the value of technology. They're not familiar with it. They don't know about it. And quite honestly, in my experience, deep down, most people over 55 years of age are still impressed by a modern photocopier that can actually repeatedly photocopy something and, for that sake, sending and receiving emails is a genius. Without a new generation coming through, even you know people 10, 15 years longer, so a lot of them still struggle with Microsoft Word and, and an email client. Can it be fixed? Uh, probably not. There's probably no way out of this that I can imagine short of re-engineering the whole idea of IT infrastructure at the end point. Most of these processes and procedures are so entrenched that idiocy is just part of the game. Leaders are really excellent at ignoring their own failures and they're incentivized to do so. In fact, their salary is paid according to their ability to actually you know, ignore their own failures or pretend they didn't happen or hide them under the carpet. You don't get rewarded for being foolish. So then why change? And if you don't make mistakes, change doesn't actually happen. And for most CEOs and executives right at the top of the food chain, uh, IT is not a success factor. They're not getting rewarded on good IT, except indirectly, and they've got enough to do. IT is just a pain in the ass to most of them. I've seen this so many times. Thanks for listening. I'm Greg Farrow from the Packet Pushers, having a good old rant about why customer IT is pretty much stupid. <laughs>